copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Nogales Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 290 regarding a murder and robbery. No description of suspect. And that's all. Rolls and quiz. Grande has developed and produced a gasoline that meets every emergency encountered in modern motoring. All gasoline qualities are consolidated in this one motor fuel. This new all-purpose Rio Grande crack meets the demands of those who drive the most and know the most about gasoline. The drivers of your police cars and other emergency equipment, to their complete satisfaction, and it is the everlasting, money-saving, motoring joy of thousands of individual drivers. The reason all-purpose Rio Grande Crack enables your motor to do more things better is that more things, more ingredients, are put into it and blended with such careful precision as to give you maximum performance at minimum cost. Profit by the greater smoothness, power, speed, and economy of the gasoline that embodies twice as many vital elements as are found in ordinary fuel. Begin the habit tomorrow of driving into the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood and asking for a tank full of the new all-purpose Rio Grande crack. First in public service, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. confidential files of the office of Sheriff J.J. Lowe of Nogales, Arizona. We have therefore asked Sheriff Lowe to open our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be the guest of Calling All Cars and to add my bit to the campaign to make more widespread the doctrine that crime cannot pay. There are various motives for crime but none of them ever justify the act of committing a crime. No matter what the stakes may be, the game is a losing one from start to finish. Isolated instances there may be which seem to indicate that a criminal has escaped the law, but no matter what appearances are, sooner or later the law is going to catch up with the lawbreaker and prove, as we shall hear in tonight's story, that crime cannot pay. I wish especially to commend Inspector of Detectives Jay Soto and District Attorney James Robbins and other members of my force for their splendid work in bringing a speedy solution to this case. On the night of October 15, 1938, in the town of Nogales, Arizona... Chief of Police J. Lowe and Deputy Sheriff Rudy Fleischner are attempting to awake one of its citizens. Here's a cool customer for you. You're telling me. A guy's shot to death in front of her door and she goes back to bed. No wonder she bothered calling me. Yeah, it is. I'm going to start kicking in a minute. Who's there? Well, I'll be. It's the police. What do you want? Did you call the police? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, something 
and woke me, but I don't know what. And then I heard someone running in the door, and I looked out, and I saw this man. I thought he was very drunk, but, but not dead. I see. Well, now that you realize the seriousness of the situation, will you please tell us all you can? But that is all. I didn't see who I heard running away. Hear any voices? No, no, just the running of the door slam. You, uh, you know this man's name? Oh, surely. It's Tracy Bird. He works as the city clerk of Magali. Know anything about his friends or his personal habits? Seems he's always alone and... He's very quiet. You know, well, please try to remember any little thing that might... Well, well, today he said he was going to the fireman's ball. That was tonight. He was probably coming home from there. Well, I guess that'll be all for the present, Mrs. Poser. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Did you find the key to his apartment? Yep. Nothing much else on him. Some loose change, pocket knife. Open the door. You didn't have any wallet or papers? Mm, no, not a thing. Wallet gone, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Everything in here is in good enough order. He didn't come in here. He got it before he opened the door. Shall I look through the stuff in here? No, not now. Do it tomorrow. Yes. Let's see what we can get in the hall. I don't think it was an ordinary stick-up. No, well, they probably took his wallet, but it would have been easier and safer to get it on the street. Look at this curtain. Uh-huh. They stood behind there and waited for this guy to come home. But a city clerk wouldn't be carrying around a lot of money. No. For some other reason. Mm. A woman, eh? Most likely. Look at the rug. They had a scuffle here. He wouldn't behave, so they let him have it. Let's go outside. Give me a flashlight. Yeah. Yeah. Dough and women are about the most frequent two things guys get knocked off for. This one doesn't look like he'd get it from the woman angle, though. Ah, uh, you can't classify guys that get it from woman trouble. Yeah, what's that beside the walk? Well, uh, it's a wallet. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Tracy Bird. There's $8 in it. Now, what do you suppose this means? Murder a guy, take his wallet, and then throw it away. Maybe they dropped it. Oh, no. Hey, look at those bushes. He fell. Mm -hmm. Looks like he was a pretty big man. Ran off the porch so fast he tripped and fell into these bushes. Dropped the wallet and didn't bother picking it up. Why, well, he must have been an amateur. And plenty scared. Hey, look at that rock. Now, that's something. Completely dislodged it. And by the size and position of it, I'd say the guy hit his knee on it as he fell. Right knee. That's it. Well, we'll just take this rock to the laboratory because we might find some strands of fiber in the rough surface of it. Maybe we can tell what kind of clothes the guy wore. I'll tell the boys to pick up any guy with a bad knee. Yeah, and cover all saloons and night spots. I have an idea he'll want to be seen someplace. Amateurs will stick their heads in a noose to get an alibi. <laughs> After warning all officers on duty in Nogales, Deputy Sheriff Fleischner joined Chief Lowe at the Nogales morgue to learn the result of an autopsy. Meanwhile, directly across the street from the police station, Sergeant David Carum was looking over the patrons of Eddie's place. As he was about to leave, he was approached by a man. Well, excuse me, officer. Yeah? Have uh, you seen Dr. Noon here about? No, I haven't. What do you want him for? Oh, nothing much. I just say over police station. Maybe I'll find him here, that's all. How long ago were you at the station? Oh, just a while ago. I come over here, and then I looked at some of the other places. I just want the first aid, that's all. Well, I'll tell you, soldier, Dr. Noon won't be able to give any first aid tonight. He's busy. Oh, that's all right. Don't mount much, no how. Yeah, I reckon I'll get back to post, Jim. Thank you, sir. Okay, soldier. Say, uh... Just a minute there. Yes, sir. That's a pretty bad limp you've got. Oh, it ain't so bad. Jumped off the running boat of a car, Mr. Cook. Kind of banged up my knee some, that's all. Your knee, huh? Hmm. I didn't know it was that serious. Come on. Yes, sir. Where are we going? We're going to see Dr. Noon. Here, get in the car. It's not far. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, you stationed at Fort uh, Huachuca? Uh, yes, sir. A lot of coaches are stationed there. You say you fell off a car and hurt your knee. Yes, sir, that's right. Happened over on the Mexican side. A good couple of friends. Been fooling around. <laughs> you know how it is when the boy gets me. Yeah. Well, the doc's busy, but I'm sure he'll be willing to stop uh, long enough to look at your knee. Yeah, there's mighty car. Where's he at? He's at the morgue.
headquarters for questioning. Their answers to the officer's questions added another baffling note to the already complex case. And I'm telling you once and for all, I'm going to get some definite answers out of you or else. You told them that before and didn't do any good. Oh. Look, boys. I'll be calm. I'll, uh, I'll sit down. Now I've got just as much time as you have. Even more. We ain't got much time. No, sir. We ain't hardly got no time at all. That's fine. Then you'll be on your way just as soon as you give me some definite answers. Yes. Now, did you or did you not see Frank Connor last night? Yes, sir. I've seen him. Well, how long did you see him? How much time did you spend with him? I can't tell that. Sir. No, sir. Can't remember that. We're off again. Oh, take it easy. Were you with Connor five minutes? An hour or all evening? Well, sir, it's a chill way. We was around with him, but we wasn't what you'd call with him. Well, that's something, but I don't know what. No, sir, nothing like that. Let me put it this way. Did you see him for any length of time? Did you talk to him? Yes, sir, but we didn't have no bottom. No, sir, Captain. We ain't fixing dessert no harm. Dessert? Wait a minute. Did you boys think we had Frank in here on a desertion charge? Mm, something like that. Well, he talked that way sometime when he drank. Yeah, it don't mean nothing by it, no. Huh? Well, I'll be darned. Listen, boys, it's got nothing to do with desertion. I give you my word. All we want to do is find out how you spent the evening so we can turn you all loose. If you're all telling the truth. Now, let's have it. Yes, sir. It, it, it's this way. Bud and me are sitting in... Everybody's place long about nine o'clock. Well, it ain't much crowd here for Saturday night, is it? Oh, well, to shut my boots. Look who's coming. Yeah, well, howdy, boy. Come on in and sit down, Frank. Howdy, boys. How's everything? Oh, right. have a drink. It'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> drink won't make it no better. Say, when you guys gonna... Go out of this dump with you. Mm, you all had a drink, yeah. Yes, right. When you started talking that way, you had plenty to drink. Oh, don't need no drink to think that away. I was getting out of army life and let them try and stop me. Big talk. How you going to do it? Oh, I got a way all figured out. See that fella behind the bar? Yeah. You mean that fella that runs this here place? That's him. Standing there big as life. Well, now, what's the manager this place got to do with y'all getting out of the army? Plenty. That fella's gonna help me. You talking crazy, boy. That's what you think. Well, you boys gonna go with me? <laughs> yeah, sure. We go with y'all, I Yeah, <laughs> we go with you, all right. Right back to the folk. I ain't kidding. Y'all talk this way every time you get a drink so down yourself. Come on, have another drink, Frank. Maybe it gets you smack dab in the heart. Maybe you fellas laughed the other side of the seven o'clock, Frank drives over on the Mexican side, and that's the last we see him. About 11 o'clock, huh? Yes. Now, about his falling from the car, did you see him fall? Yeah, I can't say that we didn't. I can't say that we didn't, Captain. What do you mean? Well, we all feel mighty good, you see, and everybody's taking turns driving the car and yelling at the gal. Maybe you fall off and don't say nothing. And maybe he does say something. But honest, Captain, we just can't remember. Well, that's that. Now, just one more thing. Did Frank have a revolver with him? No, sir. Against regulations. Well, it's against regulations to desert. Did you see a gun on him? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. All right, boys. That'll be all for the present. But we may want you again, so don't you think of deserting? No, sir. Uh, all right, sir. Well, if this thing gets any more mixed up, we'll have to call out the Marine. He might have figured on sticking up the manager and taking down the lamb and the day's receipts. And then changes his mind and waits in the hall for a city clerk coming home from a fireman's ball? Sure don't make sense. Uh, I think I'll turn him loose and put a tail on him. Then we can start working on some of the other angles. Come in. Uh, excuse me, Captain. Well? Uh, Bud and me, uh, we don't want to get mixed up in no vert and stuff. No, 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 no. Forget about that. Uh, well, Bud and me get to thinking maybe Frank was going to vert. Okay, tell your company commander. Uh, but, Captain, uh, uh, Frank got some old clothes with him. 
that knee. Oh, he's too dumb to figure we knew he fell. He stuck his head into a noose for an alibi. Officers began a search for the clothing and gun they believed had been hidden by Frank Connor. Then, after many hours of searching, an old shirt and a pair of overalls were found in a garbage can near the scene of the murder. The overalls were stained with blood at the right knee. Then, in the office of Chief Lowe... And we've asked you to come down here to help us with some laundry mark identification, Mr. Atwood. I've seen a good many in my ten years of laundry work, gentlemen. I'll do what I can. Fine. Now, what would you say about the marks on this shirt? Mm, long, square. They're quite odd. Yes. I would say, gentlemen, that these marks are either of some private firm or the army. That's all we wanted to know, Mr. Atwood. Thank you. Glad to have been able to help. Good day. Bye. And all we'll have to do is call the army post and they'll tell us that mark belongs to Frank Connor. There's an easier way than that. Let's see the laundry mark on the shirt you're wearing, Frank. Yes, sir. Hmm. Same mark. Do you still insist you never saw this shirt before? Yes, sir. And I suppose you'll say the same thing about the overalls. Never seen them before. And this hat band we found in the pocket of the overalls fits your hat. You're lying, Connor. Come clean, Frank. The blood on these overalls corresponds with the blood found on your uniform. That yeah, don't mean nothing. Well, get this, smart guy. We know you hit your knee on a rock outside of Tracy Bird's apartment because it left some fibers from these overalls on that rock. And the laboratory test proves it's the same material. That stuff don't scare me none. You were scared when you ran out of that apartment. Why did you shoot him? Well, maybe you all can tell me what I shot him with. Oh, a guardhouse lawyer, huh? I thought he'd been giving us an act. All right, Frank. You tell us. We'll find the gun sooner or later. I reckon I'll wait. You admit you had a gun? Don't admit nothing. Yes, I think you will. We've got enough to convict you right now, but I don't want to take any chances, so you're going to confess. I ain't, you ain't got nothing on me. How about your friends admitting you were going to desert? Ah, that's just talk. He's drunk. There's just one angle I don't understand. Why you picked a poor city clerk to murder. When you could have gotten the owner of the saloon. You had him case. So I'll tell you what we're going to do, Frank. We'll take you down to the morgue. Huh? That's right. We'll let you get a good look at the man you murdered. Maybe you'll remember why you did it. No, no, no. Don't take me down there. Why not? Well, I didn't put nobody in no morgue. And I don't like that place, no how. Come on. I don't think Tracy Bird likes it either. <laughs> As the officers neared the morgue, Frank Connor's morale was shattered, and it was a whimpering prisoner that was ushered into the house of death. Please, sir, don't take me in that room. There's just one where you can keep out. Tell us where you hid the gun that put that corpse in there. Didn't have no gun. Honestly, didn't. You better start telling the truth quick. That's the truth. I wouldn't lie at a time like this. All right, come on in. No, I can't do it. No. Well, see how brave you are without a gun. You can walk around among those bodies and try to guess which one you put there. I didn't put any of them no place. Mm, when you decide to tell us how you did it, we'll let you out. Uh, no, 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 Get no. In no. There. Oh, Lord, please don't. Please don't put me in here. How did you do it, Frank? Why did you kill him, Frank? Frank didn't kill nobody. Frank couldn't do nothing like that. Frank would uh, hurt nobody for nothing. How'd I ever get in this mess? Confess, Frank. You'll feel better. I can't look at them things. I'm so crazy. No. Uh, got to some help. Keep walking, Frank. Keep looking at them, Frank. They're looking at you. No. No. I can't do that. Got to walk. Walk. Got to do something. Confess. Got to walk. Confess. 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 Yeah, that's it. That's it. The Lord showed me the way. Yeah. I confess. I confess. I confess. I tell the truth. Let me out of here. Let me out. All right, Frank. Let's have it. It's it, it, how it happened. I was on duty at the poker. I was on duty at the poker. I was on duty at the poker. I knew that ain't right, so, so I got to get a look at him and w watch him when he gets to town. I see him and follow him home because cause I could go get that candle. But, but I, I don't know where he hides it. Go on. Well, I, I always for him to come home. I tell him he can't take pictures of folks and I want the camera. He pulls out a gun and, and we have a fight and the gun goes off and I runs away. With his wallet. And then, no, sir, don't know nothing about no 
Uncle Wally. That's the truth. You all gotta believe me. You just gotta. Hold out your hand, Frank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, Frank. You shoot nobody? Of course, Frank. You shoot nobody? Of course. 